right, every time five. he does a count, I don't, I don't count on that go being there. Like he says he's gonna say go, but I like right, to wait yeah. for just a second to see if he says it, and then I click. I try to rush to connect, like catch up. So yeah, instead yeah. of instead of taking <laughs> advantage of me counting us down, you're just like, ah, eh, he's a liar, and you just wait till the very end. No, yeah. no, no. There's there's a difference between a liar and someone who means well. So you mean well, but you might not follow through. It's like is, is that how you feel about me in general, or is this just specific to counting? <laughs> just about count, just about counting. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. It's all right. Calm down. It's just about counting. Yeah. It's it's a lot like trust but verify, except it's don't trust but verify also. <laughs> also, Joel, are you? Did you set up your like boom mic at your table, your dining room table? Yeah. Yeah. I I just moved my. So when the power went out last night, I was thinking of uh, I was going to go sleep over at Zach's house and everything, and I wanted to bring my iMac so I can keep working on the project. And so I kind of unplugged it and got it ready, but then I was like, huh, I'm already down here. I'm like, so I just set it up near the couch and I was like relaxing, using it down there. So then I was like, well, it's already down here. <laughs> That's why. Joy's gonna come home, you're gonna be like, I've decided to move my office down into the, the dining room. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't believe Ooh. I never thought of this before. <laughs> And you can immediately tell how Joel and I are at different different stages of parenthood because my immediate thought is having an office that has two entrances would be an absolute nightmare with a toddler. <laughs> we have to secure two entrances. <laughs> you have to secure. <laughs> you got like bodyguards. <laughs> I mean, Joel's laughing now, but Joel, you remember when we were on vacation this last fall and Micah was oh, spending the entire time being like, oh, I'm gonna kill myself in this house. Like, I locked our door. I locked our door. I was like, it's worse. It's way worse now. <laughs> he, oh my God. He, he realized if he tries hard enough, he can rip the baby gates down with brute force. Oh good, he's reaching young man strength. That's good. Oh my gosh. I, I nailed the top of the baby gates to my door frame for my office so that he couldn't pull them down off the top. So now he pulls at the bottom and pulls it up like a, like a garage door if he gets it loose. <laughs> <laughs> Proud, <terrifying>. papa. <laughs> Proud papa. Proud <laughs> papa. He's so smart. I'm so scared. <laughs> well, Dave, I'd be happy to do a photo shoot for you guys if you want so I can play with the new camera, but it's manual focus, so there's going to be a lot of artsy out of focus shots of just screaming running by. <laughs> Jeremiah, don't ask don't ask Dave, ask Micah. <laughs> He'll say if he wants photos or not. <laughs> yeah, I'll actually, allow it. <laughs> he does know. He he does know cheese now. Um, he's growing cucumbers in our front uh, flower bed. We have like a, a little. Well, it's big now. A big cucumber plant for him. And he picked his first one the other day and just had the phone ready. And Mike just immediately turns around and goes tease. <laughs> My, so he's at that stage. My niece is like that. Like my brother and his wife, they both hate having their picture taken. Like if they have to be in a family photo, they both look like they're hostages. Like while they're gritting <laughs> their teeth, their kids like smile, <laughs> shut up, smile. And you can tell they both don't want to be there. But you pull out a camera and you turn around and my niece is just standing there like. <laughs> and Joel, if you start taking photos, she just starts going through the model poses like. <laughs> or she just stand there. She she literally did this pose uh, at Father's Day. She stood and went and looked through and looked like looked through the V. Like no one has ever taught her any of this. Her mom is like, I hate all of this. I I don't know where this comes from. We think she's like watching it on YouTube or something. But oh yeah, yeah, it, thumbnails just, alone probably. Probably it's just built in. But she's only like five, <laughs> and she's like legit good at posing. I took. A, Probably 30 minutes, she led me around the yard going, now I'm going to do this. And then I had to take pictures of her doing whatever that was. And then we moved on to the next thing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's these good. days. Oh, I downloaded Audacity for, I guess they don't have the a new ver or a version for the M1 Max or anything or CPUs. All really? they had was the Intel. That's oh. what I saw. Hmm. It looks like it, man, it's an old version. They haven't updated this in a long time. I mean, they kind of, what it is hasn't really evolved. They haven't really. Yeah, the Windows version looks pretty much the same, too. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, the yeah. same as, well, it's kind of like a sync toy, uh, WinZip, FileZilla. Like, I think these look the same as they did when I was in college. <laughs> like, yeah, hasn't really evolved at all. Oh, dude, oh. I'm using car Carbon Copy Cloner. Mm -hmm. That's really, I really, really like that. That's what, what does that do? It's just the, like the drive cloner thing. Oh, okay. So I can just hit it and say sent back up to over there oh yeah joel since, a really since nice little app you were last on the podcast i did a fresh windows install 
<laughs> and I installed Windows 10. I didn't go to Windows 11. But oh. Joel, you know how fresh it is? I, I think you will appreciate this. I bought a <laughs> new boot drive. I'm like, I'm not even going to format this boot drive. I bought a new drive and installed it. I have a two terabyte NVMe SSD as my boot drive now. And I took out the old 500 I do gig. I love a fresh install. <laughs> and I took out the 500 gig and it's now in a portable enclosure that's going to be my like travel drive and stuff. But do you know how great it is to have two terabytes of NVMe storage? I do. <laughs> like, you know, I, I'm now realizing with gigabit internet, this really is sounding like a flex here, but with gigabit internet, I'm realizing that you can actually like my hard drives are a bottleneck to downloading games now because you're pulling down the stuff so <laughs> fast. A regular spindle drive cannot unpack it quick enough. Right. I'm actually capping out my regular SSDs, my SATA SSDs that can do like 500 megs a second. Oh, I can act. Yes, because your, your CPU is unpacking the stuff. So it's not like sequential mm. reads and writes where you can go as fast as it wants. It's a lot of random reads and writes. So I'm actually I've oversaturated some of those where I'm installing some games now on the MVME just so I can install it at the fastest speed possible. <laughs> My gosh. And if you watch Jeremiah with your big boy in your head, <laughs> watch your, your SSD temperature on your boot drive. It gets hot. And that's how you know your download speed is good is when it's heating up your computer's hard drive. <laughs> well, I've got a um I've got a heat sink on the NVME and it's fine. Like not everyone has whatever weird one you had before that was like hitting insane temperatures. Oh, I don't have that one anymore. Joel has that one now. <laughs> you uh, get Dave, did you is that the one you gave me? No, no, I gave you the one that they sent to replace the one, that one. Uh, no, I didn't actually give that one to you. <laughs> How's that working out for you, by the way? Uh, so far, so good. I mean, like, it gets a little bit warm, but, like, I mean, it's it's usually sitting on a table or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. has enough air. But, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's been, yeah, it's been great. So, Th this I is just make sure to back it up often. The biggest change I've noticed is Outlook is so much faster now, which is such a lame thing to say. But I had so many problems with Outlook before where like I would go to delete and move emails or something and it would just lock up for a while. And I tried everything. I even asked help desk and they weren't any help. Uh, fresh install. I don't know. Yeah, the whole the whole office suite. It's it's ridiculous that you need like high level CPUs and power to run these things. I'm like, well, doing this I have like 70,000 emails, so it makes a little more <laughs> sense. <laughs> I'm working my like, email a little harder. But there should be something that like, what, you know, who cares if you have 70,000 emails? You're not viewing 70,000. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, I search through them pretty frequently. I don't have them all downloaded on my computer. It just syncs like the last two yeah. years and then it, I, I'm searching on the uh. server for the rest, but I don't know. It, uh, Again, I'm not saying that's a good reason to have a super fast computer. I'm just saying I am using it. I guess it, I, I just guess it's funny because it's like when you go to use Gmail and you have most of the functions there. I mean, obviously you don't have everything, but it, you have most of the functions. It's like it works great and it can run on the slowest thing ever. Well, so it's like, well, that's because that's because the server, Google server is doing all of the work. Yeah. But you don't have yeah. all the features. If you use Outlook like in a browser, it's the same as Gmail. It's not as uh, slick as Gmail, but yeah. So we'll basically also have application. <laughs> The, the last time that I traveled and had some like terrible Wi-Fi, um, Gmail on a bad internet connection is awful. It is really bad because so much is server side. Mm -hmm. um, oh man, it's it's a really terrible experience. Like you, you need actual high speed internet just to to run Gmail, which is kind of funny. Where were you, Dave? <laughs> In the desert? <laughs> this is last time he traveled, so we're talking like four years ago. So you've only experienced this once in your life mm. at a place that didn't have Wi-Fi? <laughs> Joel, pause for a second and think of the kind of Wi-Fi networks that I would be connecting to while traveling. There's That's your true. answer. <laughs> All sorts of various Wi-Fi vans. <laughs> One of them was an airport that like the login system was just, was just not working with my with my laptop. But you still had like a super slow like dial-up speed connection without authentication, so I just used that, and it sucked. <laughs> it sucked real bad. Dave, have you ever connected to someone's phone? I've tried. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> you connected to someone's free phone Wi-Fi that they had guest access? <laughs> They're just skimming everything off my phone. <laughs> Dave's like, it's interesting. <laughs> Dave's need for like security and everything like takes backseat to goes completely out the window when it comes to <laughs> yeah cheapness and free Wi-Fi. At least I will sell like my soul. <laughs> it's like a philosophical question though. It's like 
is it still a man in the middle attack if you put yourself in the middle? <laughs> like if you climb into the middle of the attack? <laughs> oh, so that's, that's how Dave gets around this. I didn't get attacked. I let myself be attacked, so yeah. therefore I wasn't quite attacked. You're like, I knew it was a Trojan horse, and I still let it in, so you didn't pull one over on me. <laughs> so, Joel, now Dave, I think you'll be upset at this too, but I think Joel oh, will be boy. the most upset at it, which is why I want to talk about it with him before we officially start the rest of the podcast. Okay. So, you know, reality TV shows are dumb, right? And they are usually designed to make you feel like the people in them are stupid or whatever. Like, you know, if it's a competition show or something like they want you to be pointing and laughing and you know that they do some deceptive editing and everything. Well, Hope yeah. started watching five minutes of one this weekend and then stopped and came running to tell me that we had to watch it together. It's called Snowflake Mountain. They take... Uh, eight or nine 20 to 25 year olds who all live in the city and are prissy mama's boys and girls basically and they take them out into the wilderness and these two like uh, ex military guys to do a survival <laughs> camp with them but oh my god that sounds awesome no no that sounds awesome but the thing that'll make you mad is like oh a survival camp this is the most glamping you know what glamping is like glamour <laughs> yeah, camp yeah okay oh, there's no. their main camp is like your boy scout cabins you know where it's like a wood yeah. floor and then the big canvas things and they have cots they're raised off the ground they have a fire pit they have a whole like dining area like and it's oh in, the, in the middle of this nice hill the first day their challenges they had to overcome they were like you're gonna have to go get Find your own sticks what are they were like you're gonna have to go get your own food for tonight and i'm like okay like they've got professionals there to like teach them stuff i'm like all right they're gonna forage for some food so there's a raft that they obviously made themselves floating out in the middle of this stream that's going past. You know, it's maybe like 50 feet from the shore. And they're like, all right, half of you are going to have to get to the raft, and then half of you are going to have to go into the woods and forage. And I'm thinking like, okay, I'm, this, is, this is starting to be interesting. You know, maybe they're actually going to do something. The raft had cans of food in a box. All they had to do was put on life jackets, make it to the raft, put the cans in a bag, and make it back. And that was an entire oh adventure. Gosh. The people in the woods, they got to this bag hanging from a tree. They had to untie, figure out how to untie a knot to lower the bag down. And that was like the, you did it! Oh, you did Lord. it! <laughs> <laughs> and then their punishment thing for people who aren't like getting with the program is they have to go spend a night down at whatever they call it, like Lost Hiker Lake or some stupid name. In like and it the, doesn't have Wi-Fi. In, no. in, in the survival shelter. And it looks from the outside, the survival shelter looks like a lean to that somebody made out of like sticks. You get inside yeah. and realize, no, it's a tent that the producers covered with sticks to make it look like it's an open t it's you know it's a tarp stretched over it's not a zip up tent but like the thing that the torture of like can you survive the night is just a regular tent camping <laughs> like they they go from glamping to regular tent camping and that's like i cannot believe you would do this to us and some of these people are like 25 years old oh my why don't even that so, sounds hilarious i might have to watch we'd watched survivor for many years and thing that always like surprises me i'm like if you're going to be there for an extended period of time like i would spend so much time or at least whenever you can whenever there's any downtime and you're not doing challenges or you know negotiating crap for the game but like to like keep fixing up like your tent like your area where you're sleeping like make sure like if if it's sagging a little bit make it more firm so you sleep better you know what i mean things like that but like no one does anything they're just so freaking late it's just so like one of those things i'm like you put me you if you put me in one of those shows like you it, it would be like everyone's like over here in tears and i'm like la 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 like just like building everything and having a ball it's just so funny like the like one they had to if you get voted out it was kind of a fake vote out and you actually get one chance to come back but you have to go mm -hmm. to survivor island which is basically just they just take you on a canoe or a little boat to a smaller island and you have to sleep the night alone uh, you know and it was the amount of people that are just like in full weeping tears like can't handle sleeping one night and i'm just like that sounds like so much fun like sweet a fire all to myself i'll just spend some time thinking and reflecting it's like no <laughs> like why wouldn't you build and then they're always like oh no it rains it's like build just a few sticks and you can make something oh it's so frustrating watch we watched How? a um 
I watched one of the seasons of The Bachelorette with Hope because she really wanted me to. It was like apparently there was some famous season a few years ago where things were wild. <coughs> Given that I haven't really watched the show, I don't have a lot to compare it to. But I told her, like, I could tell very early on in the show I would be the person that goes home, like, the first night. Because as soon as I show up and meet all those people, I like... Be, have you ever seen The Bachelor or The Bachelorette? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it, it it's, yeah. it's like someone designed my hell. Like, <laughs> the, the activities and everything. Like, I, I would be like, I'm sorry. You all seem lovely. I hate, I hate you. I hate you all. I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would oh like don't I wish we were so rich so I could be like okay can we just send Jeremiah to like for three days of that like send each other all to I, our absolute hell. I think <laughs> Hope would let me go on the Bachelorette because she would know that like oh, he's yeah, not it he's not enjoyable making it. whatsoever. Well, she's like yeah he's not making it to he's he's not getting a rose like first day I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so when I went to one of the film festivals uh, and. Uh, after some of the films, every single person there from the festival was all like, we're all going out partying and stuff. And you want to join us? And I was just like, it was like 9.45 or 10 o'clock. I was like, now I'm going to bed so I can be up early for the next showing and this speech or whatever. And they're like, oh, boo, boring. And I was like, I see <laughs> like, <you're> yeah. <laughs> like, I like, literally, like, I went to bed. Everyone came back at like 5 a.m., because I could hear, like, as my room was right near the elevator. Oh, my gosh. It sounded like such pure hell. And the next day, everyone's, like, horribly drunk, hangover, like, on the table, like, drooling. It was so gross. And I'm, like, la, 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 eating my breakfast. Like, I got, I was doing freelance work, getting stuff done, you know. I was setting up the theater so that my movie could show well, making sure the audio is set right. And then people, when people came in the theater, they're, like, why does your movie look so good? It was because, oh. like, they all submitted DVDs because the old website said bring DVDs even though I'm like movie theaters don't you you don't need a DVD you know so I like gave the proper for format so they're all confused and then they're all like oh man I wish we just slept and I'm just like smiling at their <laughs> torture I'm like why this sounds horrible like a pure hell I was like oh I was just relaxing in my hotel room alone <laughs> reading getting stuff done when people like, ask me this week like what'd you do over the fourth weekend I'm like I did not go anywhere and it was fantastic and we went to bed at 10 on the fourth. <laughs> well we went we got in bed at 10 and then we listened to our neighbors shooting off mortars for an hour and we could tell we're the old people now because hope was standing at the blinds peering through the crack <laughs> glaring watching like the mortars go off while the dog sits there and panics <laughs> i had an old man moment too on the fifth because our neighbors i guess they're down the street technically uh, we're setting off fireworks on the 5th and set their entire pile on fire in the middle of their yard <laughs> and I knew something would go wrong I was like that's a long string of fireworks and then I heard the fire truck leave the station like a mile away and then about a minute and a half later I heard it drive past our property <laughs> going up the street <laughs> and they like evacuated everybody out and the guy put on the suit and had to like wade into all the fireworks and extinguish the whole pile like they were still going off after after 10 minutes it was just going and going and going does anyone track how many people die over July 4th weekend every year or at least how many people are maimed it's it's a good amount yeah. all I'm gonna say and look, we try not to get too political in the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast. Dave's looking concerned. Uh, there's a whole lot of people. Dude, that I hate fireworks. Wah. Dude, I lit off like a shitload. <laughs> I had sixty things of fireworks. You know, oh, well, my neighbors great. came over. This is great. For yeah, my I'm neighbors came over this. to look. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Go ahead. I was saying, there's a lot of people that have com been complaining for weeks about how gas prices are so high and they can't even afford to drive to work every day that all of a sudden found fifteen hundred dollars to drive down the south of the border and come back <laughs> with like a pickup truck of fireworks just to light off in one night. Well, that's actually well, that's not actually real true. A lot of the events around actually in town actually didn't have a lot of fireworks. Oh really? Oh no! I, I, we yeah. didn't go to any events. Well, I'm just I'm talking least, about yeah, the people but. here who apparently have had enough to keep them going several nights this week <laughs> or this past <laughs> week. Like those are the people I'm talking about. No, My dad came over and brought a little baggie with some uh, what, are they, what are they called? Firecrackers? Not yeah, firecrackers. Mm -hmm. They were firecrackers I had when I was 13. <laughs> the same ones. He still has them in a bag. And I was like, he's like, yeah, in case you want. And I was thinking like, I mean, I don't mind them, but I'm like, 
these things are ancient. I ain't lighting this thing because the fuses are so small. Like you, light, you have to be lighting it as you're tossing. They, like they've you probably like solidified into like <laughs> yeah. nitroglycerin or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Like right. blow my fingers off. You remember that scene in Hot Rod? You've seen Hot Rod, right? I, no, I actually haven't seen it. I really need to. It's oh one of my gosh. Of like, Joel, any yeah, night I you know. can show up and Hope and I will drop everything and watch Hot Rod with you. It's only like an okay. hour and 20 minutes. I, I, keep, I hear it's so good. It's so good. All right. But hopefully this isn't too much of a spoiler. But at one point, this guy just walks out of this bathroom and plunks down a bag on the table and he goes, <laughs> you who shitheads, I just found this bag of fireworks. Would you like to go set them off with me? And then, and then it's just a scene of them setting off fireworks. Well, one day at work when I worked landscaping, so this is like 15 years ago, my boss just walked out of the house one day and just plunked down a tackle box on the back of the truck. Uh, important context, that summer, me and my coworker, we rode in the back of the truck all summer because it was a single cab truck. So we, we sat on folding chairs in the back while we drove from yard to yard just in the bed. And so he gives us this tackle box. He's like, here's all our leftover fireworks from the last couple of years. We've just been throwing them in here. Uh, set them off. Just don't like hurt anybody. So they're all like bottle rockets and firecrackers. So we're riding down the road again, sitting in folding chairs in the bed of this truck, riding down the road, just shooting bottle rockets off at like the woods, houses, oncoming cars, <laughs> because I was 17. I'm not endorsing mm -hmm. this. Uh, but then <laughs> one of the guys who was riding up in the truck, he stuffed, he spent like 20 minutes stuffing an old Mountain Dew bottle full of firecrackers, got it completely full, <laughs> lit it, and then just tossed it into the back of the truck with us. And it started going off and like blowing everywhere. And we, we, were, we were going slow. He did it in a neighborhood and we jumped out of the truck while it was moving and had to roll out of the way of the trailer. Anyway, say all that to say like, God looks down from heaven and goes, all right, that's a freebie. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a freebie. <laughs> in I don't know if any of you saw the video, but in downtown Minneapolis on the night of the fourth, there were multiple cars going around, basically using Roman candles like a multiple launch rocket system. Uh, there were guys like out the out the sunroof in sedans and SUVs with these things just set up like launchers, and they were driving around downtown launching them at crowds of people. And it went on for four hours before, like the entire police department just showed up all at once. But everyone would be like, awesome calling. if the fire, if the police department also showed up with that, but bigger ones. Yeah, yeah, like armored truck rockets into them. That would have been amazing, like a giant fire like, like snowball fight. The police department's like, look, we've been buying military surplus gear for two decades, <laughs> and nothing has happened. Like, we got all these rockets. Want to see if they'll light? <laughs> there, there was one guy videotaping from his super high apartment window. And he, he's like, he's filming a couple of these cars going by, people screaming, running. It's like bouncing off of windows, off of cars, exploding. Everyone's, the, the car like this, like a bird out around the corner and disappears. And then he turns the camera down the street and you hear, you hear like an engine revving. And just for a couple of frames, you see a car blow through a stoplight like five blocks away, doing like 90 miles an hour while shooting the rockets backwards. <laughs> it just goes like, vroom, you just see it for a half second. You're like, what is going on? It's like Mad Max. Time. Again, we went to bed at 10 o'clock, yeah. which is what you should do. <laughs> <laughs> it oh. will surprise neither one of you to learn that the fireworks that we set off this year were the ones that I had carefully saved aside from our stash last year. <laughs> and we still have more left for next year. It's like a little baggie. <laughs> They're expensive. Even the crappy ones are expensive now. That's what I'm saying. Growing up, there was that one like uh, neighbor that they would drive down the south of the border, and they would literally spend fifteen hundred dollars on fireworks. And they would. Oh. And this is in the '90s, and they would come back right. And this was not. Mm. This was not a family that had fifteen hundred dollars to spend on fire. Hey, and is there one time a year to splurge? Just it's their birthday. I guess. <laughs> and look, more power to them. But it just, in retrospect, looking back, I'm like, oh man. I hope those kids got food the next day. Like, I just, but, but the whole neighborhood would come over. Dude, and dude July 4th sustained them for a whole year. <laughs> uh, the dude, I, I swear we went to so many cookouts Yeah, uh, that week. We went to so like many. Like growing up? No, no, this, like this, this oh, week. Oh, this is like, no, this <laughs> we went, last Yeah, week. we went to a bunch. Yeah, yeah this is, you know, we went to a whole bunch. Yeah, we've been trying to just get out and swim and just get out. It's been nice. Although this week, man, this week sucks with it's, humidity. It's Literally, I check it in the morning. The humidity for the last two days in the morning was 98%. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. It's been... Miserable. <laughs> we, we usually walk for a while at lunch, but today we just stayed inside and walked after Micah's nap instead. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was gross out there. Guys, uh, 
This is the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast. Hold, hey. hold that thought, because I got I got one more distraction for us. Oh, we, Two can more go, we can go right anything. back into the distraction. I just figured at some point I ought to do it. But no. My audio is out of sync, uh, because Audacity was not recording anything on the waveform for the first few minutes for some reason. Oh, that's okay. I've, just we, just do we need started now. No, just started now. I'll use the backup oh, for the I, first bit. I've been going for 14 minutes now. Oh, yeah, you're good. I'll, I'll just yeah. I'll just sync okay. it up at some point. I'll sync it from the end. You're fine. I got one more complete left-hand turn for us before okay, Jeremiah okay. tries to correct to correct the record. Um, talking about the awful survival show, um, the last decade of decade plus of working on the house, I watch a lot of like DIY videos, right? And there's an entire genre of DIY clickbait of just garbage, like how to create a model dam out of concrete that actually works in the middle of the woods for no reason. Please watch this video for 11 minutes for the full ad revenue and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I got like a survivalist DIY video the other day that someone was passing around <laughs> because it was just so absolutely ridiculous. I, I can't find the exact one, but I want you guys, is there a chat we can use here just for the, so I'm not confusing James now, I'll just post it in the, in the host chat. It's like how to create a survival shelter. You're like, okay, let, let's see, like DIY, how are you gonna survive? The answer Wait, is apparently that, that got recommended to me the other day too. It's wonder, going. Well, this is again. It's not the, the exact one, right? Okay. But just, just, just skip through a little bit because it's so ridiculous. I see. A, the, I see a flaw already. <laughs> Wait a second. I did see this. <laughs> I didn't click it because I was all. like, "Is that plastic wrap?" <laughs> yeah, Dave. Can you describe it a little bit for the audio listeners? It's it's a woman in the woods taking a roll of like restaurant plastic wrap. The mm -hmm. like expensive heavy duty kind, and she's wrapping it around a bunch of trees to create a platform to build a to build a shelter <laughs> on out of more plastic. But when I say she's wrapping the trees with plastic, I'm saying it's like rolls upon rolls that she then rolls upwards to create like a plastic rope. And th th this concept is basically the same for the version that I saw. So she's she's carrying like. 60 pounds of plastic wrap into the woods more, to make this more and what it ends up being if you just just skip to like 719 it's a plastic coffin joel imagine that 90 percent humidity and you crawl into that plastic <laughs> well, hot box that's what i was thinking is like you would actually cook to death like i think you yeah. could die in this yeah what makes me sad about this version though because there's like a thousand clones of this video now all over the place but the one that i saw i laughed so hard because about halfway through i'm just i'm <laughs> skipping through at laughing at how ridiculous it is they had this one shot where you think like oh she's probably used like eight or nine rolls of plastic and there's like an establishing shot of just literally another 20 rolls of restaurant plastic pile up in the woods this <laughs> is a very of, expensive tent <laughs> yeah yeah this this i laughed so dude, hard it's, just, at it's that a real shot. quick just a, just an easy real quick survival thing dude yeah just, just a super quick you're out in the middle of the woods you're like yeah, oh no i have just, all this restaurant just, i know plastic it's like oh crap. crap i totally forgot to bring a tent Good thing I have 60 pounds of plastic wrap. This is a lot of work too. Like if you watch the lighting, it's like getting dark as she's finishing. Well, she wants to she wants to cook herself evenly so that the bears can find. <laughs> also, I don't feel like it's gonna last very long. Of course not. It's plastic. No, wrap. It, no. It's, it's I mean, of course, it's just it's just a unique thing to make to you know make video, video views. That's all you know. Of it, yeah, yeah. Th this this one, this clone of the video alone has fifty. Because it's so perfect views. to hate too. Because it just makes no sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, it like makes absolutely yeah. zero sense. <laughs> and if you look at the suggested videos up on the side, it's like someone's creating an entire cabin out of plastic wrap <laughs> in one of the thumbnails. And he's. I need. I need. I need. To, dude, I need to up these people and be like. Make a quick uh, survival thing out of thumbtacks. No, Joel, there, there like, is a car what? channel that I used to follow back in the day, and then they kind of like, they died out for a while, and then one of the guys decided he wanted to make full-time money again, so he just started making like meme car videos, but it was like, can we make a tire out of a paint can? Can you use, um, can you use vegetable oil as engine oil? Can you like make a tire out of a, a wood pallet? Like it was just the most, what will look the dumbest in a thumbnail? And they make they get like seven or eight million views a piece because of this, and so he's making insane money, being like, "Can I use an outboard motor, outboard boat motor to drive my car?" And all they do is they spend fifteen minutes faffing about. They get it to work for thirty seconds, and that's the end of the video. And they just rinse and repeat every day. You wake up and be like, "How do we want to make five thousand dollars today?" <laughs> Which like, oh, it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. Yeah. I was just gonna say real quick that that's a thing I have noticed for I don't watch a lot of car channels but hearing it from you 
car channels and gun channels have like a 60% chance over the course of three years of turning into a dumb science channel. Mm -hmm. For that's all it was. Genres. And, and, well, yeah. and actually, so the yeah. kid running it, he was a little <laughs> bit smart in, in a certain vein of being dumb. He was taking all of that money and plowing it into Bitcoin in like 2018, 2019. And so he ended up making like $4 million in Bitcoin. Uh, and then he said he sold like a million dollars of it or something and, and was just being a bum. So I don't I haven't followed them to know if he's um, still <laughs> how much of that Bitcoin he no, still he, has. He spent all that money to make that that <laughs> sweet survival tent. tent. <laughs> yeah, he, he put it all into plastics. <laughs> you know, what's funny is like seeing some of these videos like back when like YouTube like just started. Like, you know, I was making some of these silly like iPhone videos like like way back when and one of them was an unboxing video that never gets unboxed <laughs> so I was gonna do a series of it always gets right <laughs> close to the edge of like we're about to show you something and then I just don't like I review it and then it never you, the box never gets open Joel you should do an unboxing where you unbox the phone <laughs> and you like you do the all the normal unboxing stuff except you never take the plastic stickers off the screen you're just using it and setting it up with the stickers on Ugh, that, like, that bothers but me the, but the video was it was a two-part iPhone unboxing and it still never got unboxed by the second video. And the comments, were, the comments were like, when is part three coming? Like, I want to see the unboxing. I almost made one more. I was like, nah, this is stupid. <laughs> well, make, like, make a oh, part sweet. three where right as you lift the box up, you have like an SD card error that pops up on the screen. It's just like 10 minutes of that. <laughs> <laughs> File read error. Dang it. Well, guys, Yes. This is the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, a it podcast is. all about the irreverent love of gaming. I'm one of your hosts, Jeremiah, and tonight I am joined by The Ranger. Yep. And what did we decide I, to do for Joel? I feel like we had card. something for Joel. The wild card. <laughs> What's up? <that? laughs> all right. That's a dated reference. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, oh, now, if, if you're wondering why you've just listened to 30 minutes of us catching up, it's because I think this is the first time the three of us have hung out like, <coughs> since the last podcast the three of us were all on. Is that right? In April, maybe? Maybe. James was actually going to be on this one tonight, too. Uh, but then he yeah. had something last minute come up with his kids. He had to run and like drive him somewhere or something. So um, he is unfortunately not able to be here. But we really were trying to get all four of us back on at the same time. That is all the excuses I will make for us. Uh, you know what quality you're getting. Okay. Um, do you guys want to do the news first or what are we playing? Playing, definitely. Okay. What, yeah. Joel, I think I want to start with you. Uh, because I don't have questions about the first game. I have a lot of questions about the second you've written on your yeah. list. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just still playing Elden Ring. Um, have you beat it? It's, it's, uh, no. So because, well, me, Eric, and Giancarlo, we all kind of, we all got to the Halleck tree right at the start of it and then just kind of stopped there to wait till we could all do it together. But then one of us can't play one time, but then we'll get on and we'll just, we're all trying to get the big horn weapon the last one you have to kill one dude that it only has a two percent drop to like get that big horn and we want it um so anyway so all we've been doing is together. always been yeah, all we've been farming that big horn together um and then uh -huh, uh -huh. playing with my brothers to try to get them through the areas as well so i've redone everything do you, uh do you want to carry me through fighting millennia because that's what i've got next and uh i, kinda I haven't, I haven't got, done much I haven't, in the last two weeks when, when i get there i'm sure i'm like dude it's gonna be it's it is gonna be a challenge to get my brothers to if even i don't even know if it's gonna be possible i only have we her. all dude oh, okay. i only have her and the final boss of the game that's it that's all i've got left dang yeah i've i still have a little bit of that a little bit like i still have the bit of the tree left i have a little bit of the snowy area where something changes and then i think that's about it and i've done literally every single cave every mm -hmm. item everything um but anyways the ninja turtles uh, it's ninja turtles shredder's revenge it's like a complete re like reboot of the ninja turtles game like, like a, was this if an you, NES if, or if, SNES? If, yeah, if it looks like Super NES. It's like it's made in that really? style, like the arcade games. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun, um, and so I've been playing that um, on uh, Switch right now. So, but I think it's on just everything right now. I think it's, I believe it is on PC too. But it is. It it's is, on Steam. It's, it's, it's really. I mean, probably great for the your uh, Steam, Steam Deck. Steam Deck. Yeah. 
But yeah, that's been really fun because it's a four or five player, and it's all actually it's all online. It's online too as well, so which is really fun. So it's just you know, Ninja Turtles Brawler, and they just captured it beautifully. Like huh. if you played any of the Super NES games, it's basically that. I never um, did, but no. Oh, okay, well, it's really fun. They have a couple different modes too. I have one that again that if you like. It's not very hard, but it's just really fun as opposed to like you die and then it's like have to restart over each way. Um, it kind of lets you just have fun. So, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Nice. Dave, I think you have a lot of things on there. Yeah. Yeah. After oh, wait, oh sorry. Real, real quick. I'm, I'm sorry, on. Dave. I just, uh, yep. Joel, did you listen to uh, me and Dave's <laughs> podcast, uh, Elden Ring is Fine? I think you avoided it specifically is what Joel told me. You know, really I think I, at the time. No, I think I did at the time, but then I forgot to go back. I really need to go listen to it. Okay, we were actually more complimentary than than that. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, I think we talked about this. I think you said I it, I was just didn't want to get spoiled at the at the height peak of love. I, I just in I've, case I've tapered down on it a little bit as well, just because I'm so close to the end. It kind of I, I was for a long time just hopping on, you know, every night when I was available to for just yeah. an hour. I'd listen to a podcast on the side. Don't like tell me speaker. that I hate so much the things that you choose to do. <laughs> <laughs> listen to hey, a Dave, well, the, 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 pro- the difference, Dave, between you and all of us is we finish games. So, you know, whatever finishing games versus yeah. hearing you, games. you finish them. <laughs> you finish them by watching eight shows at the same time. You finish a lot of things with 10 <laughs> oh, wait, wait. for each. <laughs> Okay, that is actually very true. I am watching many shows right now. Oh, don't <laughs> okay, do, do you wanna, that. Do you want to hear? Do you want to see this? Okay, so I'm watching. No, what's that? What's that Western no. show? That Western um, show, 1883. No, or the the Yellowstone. Modern. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Watch it. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm 15 minutes into season four, episode two. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, 11 minutes into Westworld, episode two. Uh, yeah. Oh, what else? Oh, I'm watching. I'm watching. Uh, I, I I'm going through Tombstone. I actually gonna watch Joel, it tonight. Joel, I'm gonna watch this tonight. I'm Joel, gonna, I'm gonna watch. Joel, yes, I will. <laughs> look into your camera right now, Joel. Look into your I'm camera. Looking, I'm looking. <laughs> How far did you get into Tombstone before you paused it? Just earlier today, I, I stopped at like a minute and a half because I was like, all right, I'm going to watch later. Tonight. But a I just minute and a half? Sh- Why'd you even start it? Well, because I, I was doing something else, but what I wanted it. What changed in a minute? What changed in a minute? I don't know why that got me good. <laughs> Joel's like, wait, it's it's Tuesday. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go grocery shopping. <laughs> go go go. <laughs> oh, a minute and a half. I, I know because it will sync over and it will show on my Apple TV and the like. Breeze play, recently played, so I was like, sweet, I'll remember to watch it later. Because I put I put movies in my watch list, but I, like I totally forget about watching lists and like Amazon and stuff I have so many in there mm-hmm. so if I do that it's like oh right it pops up and I'll see it so <laughs> there's a bit of method to my madness although now you guys have heard about my wasteful drinking right <laughs> right so wow, Joel's I, had a, a problem already early in parenthood well, yeah. so but Pecor he and he completely trashes me on this every chance he possibly can so I just I've, I've I had this horrible habit of like cracking open a drink and I'll drink some and I'll just forget about it. And so it'd be like half full or or just barely a quarter done. And so here's the problem, right? You have that, but then it will go flat. And of course it's nasty to drink, right? Right. And so I'll forget about it. And I'm like, sweet, I got another one. And I came upstairs <laughs> and I had, I had like two cans that were almost full right next to Joel. my bed. And I, and I came up with a cold third one. <laughs> so Picor, Picor has been making making this one. He goes, he's like, Joel, you have a weird fetish. Of I want to crack open that crisp cold can, but I will not touch it. Just, I just, There's something so satisfying about leaving it behind. <laughs> you just want that fresh spray. <laughs> <laughs> on that fresh spray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for a time for a deal slinging Dave moment. If I do that, Joel, I will yeah. chug the entirety. I left this can <laughs> earlier from lunch. Forgot about it. I chugged it. And oh boy, warm flat coconut water. Mmm. So I've, like, would you? Will you? You'll drink. Let's say if you did. You have you ever forgotten it in the next day? 
You'll finish uh, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and flat. If if Jess goes to bed first and I find a can that she's forgotten about, like on the island somewhere, I will chug it and put it in the recycle bin. Dave, if you lived in my house, you'd be endlessly <laughs> chugging. <laughs> I'd be like all bloated like a Willy Wonka. The like, you're like, oh, thank God, I, finally, I could finally go to bed. Just as you rest down, like you hear the jingle of a can and a snap. Yeah. No! I, I reach over to put my phone in the charger and like hit like five more cans <laughs> on the nightstand. Half I'm basically one. like that little kid in uh, Signs, you know, there's yeah. something in my water. I'm basically that. Dude, the last time you That's were terrible. over here, I found a can you left on my desk. It was like <laughs> know, three I'm fourths sorry. full. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a recession, Joel. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, it's the worst. The worst is I went outside. I was I was working on my laptop outside in the gazebo. Right. It was beautiful, nice air. I brought out a fresh coconut Lacroix, cracked that sucker open, and then we got into a design thing completely forgot about the drink at all was hot flat and I didn't drink it all so I literally just cracked it open and I'm like you know I still enjoyed that experience though <laughs> so Joel if, oh, we could, if we could make, make you, my skin crawl. if we could make you like a you know one of those freezer packs you put in the freezer it's full of gel it yeah. gets frozen. if we could put make you something you put it in the fridge it's like a little shorty can that it just gets mm -hmm. cold and then just has a pop you just go <laughs> on the top and then it warms up and then you just put it back in the fridge would you like that I mean, I probably would. I do love. You could dab a like a little essential like, oil like on the inside like of it. So when it hot, yeah, a summer hot day, and you just snap it open, hearing that crack and fizzle. Oh yeah, there's nothing quite like it. You know what's pretty cool too is drinking what's inside. <laughs> uh, as Dave. long as these weird things continue to anger Dave. They will never end. <laughs> Don't worry, I got some things that will anger you too for later on. Oh, good, good, good. good. All right, Dave, speaking of things that will anger uh, us, what's the first game you've been playing recently? I see. Battlefield 2042, Why? unfortunately. Why? It's more more chasing the drag. Well, content, first of all. I'm tracking <laughs> I'm tracking the game's progress for content. Um, and then also chasing the dragon, because they launched season one with a new vehicle, a stealth helicopter that was actually a lot of fun to, to fly. Um, I did one video with it back in early June. I actually had a lot of fun with it. I was like, oh, I gotta do a few more follow-up videos. I also like finish unlocking all the stuff for it. Uh, I've played about an extra 30 minutes in that vehicle over the last month because DICE and their infinite wisdom, because people were complaining about the other helicopters that were already in the game, the same patch they released this new stealth chopper for everyone to use, they reduced the amount of all of the air attack vehicles, the <laughs> entire category is now one spawn per 64 player team. So that's every every little bird, every new stealth helicopter, every Apache. I think there's there's uh, oh and and the jets too are all in that same category. So if one player on your team has spawned any of those, you're never going to see that, that vehicle spawn. So for the rest so of the when match. that player in every match, because there always is that player, it's you yeah. in a lot of yeah. them. You are not you are, not anymore. I'm not fast enough these well, days. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but but that <laughs> when that guy gets it, that's it. Like air is just off the table for the rest yep. of. The yep. One we're, spawn. We are, we are not team. derailing into just ripping on Battlefield 2042 in this podcast because we've done. Well, honestly, of that. there's nothing left to rip of it, to be honest. Joel, I didn't think so. But <laughs> well, I just mean like Joel. They found they found a new butthole to rip open here. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> like there was room to expand. <laughs> they, <laughs> Good. They somehow they couldn't look at all, every previous Battlefield game and the amount of vehicle spawns, and they somehow thought the answer was going to be one. And as a reminder, this stealth helicopter was the only vehicle added after the last eight months. This is the only thing that they added for vehicle spawns. And they also reduced it to one, one spawn for the entire category, for the entire team. And when people pointed out this was kind of not a, not a smart move, like at least put the jets in their own category because they're kind of doing their own thing anyway. DICE's response has been, good idea, we'll look into that. And that was the beginning of June. A patch oh came out this gosh. week, and I was hoping like maybe they can just make make that like one little tweak, right? It's been a month. Nope, still one spawn per team. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, it's like you almost go, they can't be that stupid that they have a group working on this. It's got to be like two dudes in a back room, and they're like, hey, we'll just keep 
because they're doing this for legal reasons. That's all they're doing. They're they're just limping along right now for legal reasons because of the battle pass and DLC. Like they, I think there's certain no Joel, no Joel. The do. tweet said the team is excited <laughs> about the upcoming expansions. Oh, okay. Well, love letter to fans, Joel. It was yeah, right there in the you're Twitter feed. Love letter to fans. Oh man. Again, this is another instance of, of no, dice. Dave, we don't. Dave, 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 Just Dave, stop. Stop rubbing your eyes. Look at me. Dave, look at your camera. Look at your camera. Look at your camera. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm looking. It, it's, not, it's not your fault. It's, but it's, not, I, it's not your fault. Don't do this to me, Jeremiah. It's not, 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 <laughs> it's not, it's not your fault. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Dave, you, we could just move on. We could, I'll you, make one final rant here. Okay. This is the usual problem where dice balances with a sledgehammer. They look at their 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 weakness is their their data that they pull from the live game. They say people are suffering because people are, are spamming the little bird rockets, right? Like people hate mm -hmm. dying to the, the little birds constantly. So instead of working on like fine tuning the balance of those weapons, like how fast they reload, stuff like that, their solution is, okay, let's move the little bird into the attack category and then also make that entire category one spawn. And then there's just less air vehicles overall because nobody likes those anyway. It's, it's just, there, there's, there's, no, there's no careful testing. It's just throw giant changes at the wall. And if they're going to throw giant changes at the wall, I know I said we can move on, but I just had an idea. They could have some fun with it. They are wasting their opportunity to actually get the community to have some fun. Put 64 vehicle spawns on the map on each side. Who cares? Give them 30 attack <laughs> helicopters per side. Like <laughs> the videos would be incredible. People would enjoy hey, do, that. Do they even have a aircraft only mode? Kind of like Battle as of this week, others? they do. It's it's hosted through Portal, but they actually added one, and and it's it's a pretty good amount of fun. I've been playing it some this week just to practice with all the vehicles. Although, how long has the game been out now? What five months? Uh, uh, no, it's been out eight? for almost 10 months. 10 months? Oh, It came gosh. out in October. Oh, no. And they've only yeah, added just, one new map. One new map. And also, I want to answer a question that I posed on a previous podcast, which was, how the hell are you going to play the new map when there's no server browser? And that's all people want to play. The answer was, DICE added a tile for it on the main screen. It's literally just, play the new map, which they left up there for all of, I think it was 10 days before they removed <laughs> it. Oh, uh, and, and uh, something else back there. Because, um, like, at least with Battlefront, you you couldn't pick a specific map, which I I was annoyed with that. Right. But you could at least pick like, okay, it was Bespin, Death Star, Endor, and stuff like that. So, like, if it was with Battlefield, if they had more than like two maps, you could choose like, let's. I don't want to do the night maps, you know, like whatever, like the one that's just you you spawn and it's always dark. Like, I'll at least do this one because I like these two maps. So with Star Wars Battlefront, it was at least fun because me and Joy would jump in and we would play Bespin because it was a fairly easy map and it was like it was corralled pretty well. Those maps are great and it was fun. So you at least knew you were going to get into two or three maps that you really enjoyed as opposed to like I, I, I haven't even seen all the maps in Battlefield in the new one. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah. Actually, I've never actually played all of them. And, and, and I played I think 20 hours maybe total. But I'm like, within 20 hours, you should be able to see all seven maps or whatever it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like that, like, yeah. it's, not like I'm, it's not like I'm trying to unlock every weapon in 20 hours, maybe. But I just wanted to see the maps that I bought. <laughs> it's like, nope. Yeah. Um, I'll just go on down my list a bit here. I've also played uh, a bit of Battlefield <laughs> 5 this month. Actually, I, I wanted to do a, a direct comparison because one, one super frustrating night where I was trying to get some more time in that stealth helicopter in 2042 I ended up being stuck, you know, running around on the ground doing other things because of that single spawn. And, and like, the game just doesn't always feel great in 2042. Like, something just always feels off with yeah. the whole game's formula. And I was like, is this just me, like, hating on the game still? Or is it just the formula doesn't work? So I literally, I closed 2042, launched Battlefield Five, and played for two hours. And within five minutes, I was having, like, a way higher consistent level of fun because the whole game just felt different. It felt oh, like... Yeah. Even with all the changes in five, it still felt like the core formula was still the correct one. Is is how I would describe it. Yeah, it's 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 very much like those platformer games that you you think it's such a simple type game, but when a game gets the jump and the slidey feel and feeling of controlling your character hitting platforms, and you go to a clearly low, cheap developed game that tries mm -hmm. to capture it, mm -hmm. 
it's like it's amazing how bad it can be and that's always how it felt because even going back to we played battlefield one a little bit and i played with my brothers after because they didn't have battlefield 2042 and i was like right right well i think it was like on uh, free on playstation or something like that I, I was almost amazed like whoa like outside of playing with people that were just clearly a billion times better because they've been playing for a long time sure sure you still felt like you were in control of the character and yeah, 2042. There's just something weird and sloppy about it that it just feels off. Weird and sloppy. And, and I'll say one of those things remains that this server performance is really, really bad still. Like, you know, as infantry, you're dying in, in, like, the single frame frequently, which is a problem with every Battlefield game that they've, they've had to fix, except for Battlefield 1, I think. Like, Battlefield 3, mm. Battlefield 4, Hardline... Battlefield 5 all had that issues where the, like, the server were struggling and when the game first launched and you would die yeah. way too fast from from your screen and then also um, I don't know if you, I doubt you watched it Joel any of the the stealth helicopter video that I, I posted like I'm having fun flying this chopper right but dude, if you watch it in third person it's going hitch 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 yeah I did I did dude, see that it is, it's like I can't I can't believe that crap so still, it's so bad. bad and it's one thing to have those hitches that we maybe had in the older games but the maps and everything was so more fun, you know, to play. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, it's. I, I, I don't. I honestly, I don't know what they're gonna do. So, um, what else have you been playing, Dave? I'm desperately <laughs> yeah, trying to get us yeah. out yeah, of yeah, the yeah. battlefield ditch. I, I'm gonna leave most of of the ready or not talk for Jeremiah because I've talked okay. about it so much. But the the new patch is incredible. I actually did a, a double take when I realized this game has only been out. This for is that six SWAT months. game, right? Yeah, it's yeah, only been okay. in early access for <laughs> six months. Like public early access, and it has so much. Content. Yeah, it's I awesome. that that is. I, I told my brothers about that. If it comes to console, we're definitely getting it to play because that just sounds awesome. Can you play like if we, if me and my brothers just wanted to play ourselves and host a like? Yeah, we can yeah. just like like it's kind of yep. like a online co op through yeah, a single it's, player. It's mission. PVE. It's not yeah, PVP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, but I didn't know if you had to be in an online server type. I don't know. No. Like, no. So we we always get, do so private we lobbies. Always. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, yeah yep. definitely, definitely buying it. I'll leave that for Jeremiah, though. I'll, I'll wax poetic, poetic about Hunt Showdown, because uh, <laughs> I'm still absolutely hooked on that. And I, I realized something, um, writing it down here. Um, I never got into MMOs, like as a kid, teenager, like I just never been into MMOs. And it, it's weird for me, but one thing I'm super excited about for the course of this year, being so into Hunt Showdown is that they always do holiday events and like they're really, really well done. And I've missed all of them because I wasn't actively playing the game. Um, but I'm looking forward to like live service events in a game, which is like, again, that's just not my thing usually. But mm. they're supposed to have a, a Halloween event again this year and then like a, a winter solstice event. And each one has like a, a little like mini objective you do on the map. Yeah. And then there's like some some le like legendary weapons or, or characters that you unlock for each event that are like exclusive to that event. And you can go back in game and see the ones that they, that they, they have in their previous events. Um, one of them is like a plague doctor for Halloween. It had like a headless horseman character for Halloween. And it, you know, it's stuff that fits pretty well into the game's overall That's aesthetic cool, and lore. Without being it's super funny that you, you got into that because me yeah. and Joy, we used to play Guild Wars One all the yeah. time, and we played yeah. that for maybe five years, off and on. And we, and we, yeah, the Halloween and, and and Christmas events were always so much fun because you, you know, you'd, you'd go to a certain area and it'd be like snowball fights or like find the three snowmen. Like it was always like silly things, and yeah. Joy was always collecting like the free candies or like you <laughs> yeah. know apple, you know, <laughs> silly stuff. And it, but it works so well in that lore, and it just made me think, Dave. MMO. What if they made a Witcher MMO, kind of like Elder Scrolls Online? Oh my would gosh! You... Yeah, that would be my one. <laughs> I, I would yeah. like. To, I'd like to say yes too, but I always said, like when I was playing Oblivion, if they made a version of this that was an MMO, like WoW, because this was when WoW was super huge when I was playing right, Oblivion. Right, right. I'm like, I would just play this forever. And then they made that, <laughs> and it, uh, I didn't like it. Yeah, I so, didn't. I didn't like the Elder Scrolls one that much because. It, like there was certain atmosphere and I think it was the third person fighting just is never very good in those games right yeah so I think when you're playing on your own it's really fun in first person and well, taking your time but I, I think, think Witcher third person type even going to that kind of MMO slash and little bar would I think it would actually adapt better in that kind of fantasy realm as opposed to I don't know the, the El Elder Scrolls the real reason I mean I guess they, I mean, it's still they, popular they, enough but yeah the real reason was they released Skyrim on a new platform and, and you just bought that <laughs> again that was why <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, wait, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I re-downloaded Skyrim and Elder Scrolls Online because I, I bought it when it when it came out on console years ago and everything, and I, pl- I played a good amount, and it was actually pretty fun. It just got boring once I got through the first area, and then it just got really complex of like I didn't know what I was doing and then you get to an area and it was like so higher level you had to do a lot of group fighting and I was like I just like playing it on my own and kind of pretending it was Skyrim well they came out with an area that was the same area as Skyrim and I was just like oh I'm curious how the graphics look and so I redownloaded them both just to compare the graphics and then I got lost in Skyrim for another 10 hours there it is that's what I was waiting for (laughs) damn it I, I I think that's why I'm actually excited for the hunt events is because MMO gameplay has never appealed to me. The numbers flashing, the combos, the giant hot bar, like none of that stuff has always been <laughs> yeah. my thing. So for, for hunt where it looks like the events are like just like little side things that you do in game to unlock more stuff. Like to me, I love the core gameplay loop. And so it's just it's like an extra just different thing to make it feel a little bit fresher for a while, which is which is cool. Also, yeah. If it's the same character they use again for for this Christmas for the Winter Solstice event, it's the Hunt version of Ebenezer Scrooge. And Joel, his lore is awesome. He, he is 100% Ebenezer Scrooge. He's like a ledger keeper for the American Hunter <laughs> Association, but he hunts down people who don't pay their debts. <laughs> like that's his like lore. Yeah, and that's he's, pretty he's got, awesome. He's got the hat and the scarf and like the long coat and everything. It's yeah. It's oh, just funny because I've never been into those events Dave, before. did you see about the Gwent Rogue Mage like DLC? And I, I was like, ooh, Gwent! But I guess it's apparently just a DLC for the game. And I watched the trailer and I'm like, that Gandalf meme of like, I have no memory of it. Like, it's just, I wish I could have enjoyed that game. It's just too much. They have too many little things. Well, I wish it was more base Gwent game and just a story around that. But I don't, I don't like all the trillions of cards now. What's cool about the one that came out today, Joel, is it's just PVE. It's just like a, a collector single player version, so you can play it. Well, at your well it's own the pace. DLC of that that's the single player game, right? It's right. Like a, it, yeah, it, that one looked really good, but I just wasn't a fan of just how many cards. There's a lot, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I really liked the basic simple one that I will never play again. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more. What I played because this was this was really cool. Again, not to rag too hard on Battlefield struggling servers, but that that little indie Civil War game that I previewed back in like February, I I got invited yeah. out to an event that they were hosting at the Games Battle Cry of Freedom. They've got like an active modding community, which is pretty cool for this small little game. And this modding group had made a Napoleonic like war mod for it, where instead of Civil War, it's it's all the um, the the British and then the French soldiers. Um, and so they had a 500 person battle with this like French group of like organized um, wow. like role playing gamers. And I, everyone was, everyone on my group, which was, I, I was playing with a bunch of uh, like Civil War uh, players. Uh, we were playing kind of like the light infantry, kind of like loosely authentic yeah. style. But we were kind of picking on this French group because what did they call it? They called it um, LARP lines. Because they would come over the hill literally in formation. Oh, man, that's kind of awesome. Yeah, like, we were picking on him, but also it was terrifying. <laughs> but it's funny, it, it reminds me of, I used to play Day of Defeat all the time yeah, on, yeah, on, yeah. On, 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 like, the Half-Life engine or whatever, you mm, know, the, the yeah. old one. And me and a buddy of mine, we would play, and we would always play with this German team. For some reason, like, he, was a fr- he was friends with this, like, group, and it was like the most hardcore German team. So they of course played German and we, we were playing American. It was so much fun though because we they would turn the like the voice IP, you know, like the voice yeah, yeah, channel, yeah. but like public, like they would because they own the server, so you could hear everyone. And so you're hearing freaking Germans like <laughs> yelling at it was all it was so cool. It was it was really we had a blast. But it, like they were such a good group because everyone was just like, We're gonna kill you scum and you know it was back and forth. But and then you get in the chat afterwards, and everyone was fine. It was just, we had a blast. Like that was that was really fun. It was just so it felt so realistic and awesome. <laughs> it's like holy crap, dude. That was this event because the French team was speaking French over like the local voice chat, which also they had turned the voice chat off at the start, worried that the server was going to crash. <coughs> but their server held up fine, so they turned on local voice chat. And so all the charges for like the last half of the event, you would hear all the French <laughs> players yelling back and forth and stuff. Um, but in that same vein of just like cool moments that games can make happen. My group of players was defending this 
brick fort basically in the middle of a field with a kind of forest nearby and we defended it really well uh, for most of the match and then out of nowhere you wouldn't think that a line of infantry could sneak <laughs> but we were so focused on a few of their their light scouting <laughs> units off to like the, the western side they had multiple lines of what must have been 70 some enemy troops that had gotten into the tree lines near us and someone shouted out like movement in the trees to the east and we shifted our line to like get behind a stone wall and get ready we exchanged a couple of volleys and then all of a sudden someone goes they're fixing bayonets and then all of a sudden it's 70 players bayonet charging out of the tree line <laughs> we got rolled over and then it goes into like spectator cam till your next respawn wave i pulled the camera back and it's like a human wave coming out of the forest they like poured into the fort door <laughs> and you're watching like the last few guys like behind the fort doors get their like last shot off before they get overrun it was you know awesome. I, like civil war games from a gameplay perspective is such a cool game mechanic because of like the one shot how long mm -hmm. it takes to reload versus mm -hmm. you know like like that I, i've always loved about that I, I, mm -hmm. I, I would love i wish we could see a mega project being made but you'd need to make it by like real big fans of it but but even like i think even like a uh, open world or a like a survival i always thought like a cool survival kind of a zombie type game but set in those times so you have all yeah. those old muskets and you know what i mean so you're just you're reloading really slow and honestly <laughs> the hunt kind of does a little bit with yeah with, yeah with that and that, i think that's what i loved about that game too is like shotgun like slow to reload so makes everything like uh, should i wait to shoot because uh, we play I, play I remember playing a civil war game on the half-life mod i forget what it was called it was like battalions or something and you'd always you're doing the back and forth dodge <laughs> open to sh and you're waiting like come on shoot once and then they shoot and they're like uh, struggling to reload and you're like stab uh, and that's yeah, actually yes. joel one thing that that we're I, i'll just say we as a group our, our csg group that's been playing hunt a lot one thing we're struggling with is how good melee is because of how slow the weapon reloads are um, we we get outplayed a lot of times by people who have brought like a cavalry saber or a lance or something like that, like some of the more melee focused <laughs> weapons or like a bayonet, because uh, when your reloads and your fire rate are that slow, if you get charged with a bladed <laughs> weapon, it's like real panic sets in. And, and it's, oh yeah, because well, they go so see, fast. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's one thing we're trying to get better at. Um, I I do love that in those slower paced games, but we'll let Jeremiah talk about. That's some things finally, I guess. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, so I have been playing Total War Three Kingdoms. So Game Pass, I just went on like Game Pass Day when they add the new stuff for the month and I just go on and install a bunch of things. Uh, so I installed Total War Three Kingdoms, played some of that this weekend. Um, it's fun. It, they've changed a good amount of things for, uh, for this one compared to old Total War games. Like there's a lot more hand-holding for some of the diplomacy and everything and then three kingdoms it's i believe it's feudal china i haven't played long enough to know if it, the game branches out past that right now it appears to be feudal china um and it's it's a good amount of fun but you know it's classic total war so uh it actually runs pretty well i'm getting 60 <laughs> fps 4k everything maxed out with like thousands of units and battles and things mm. Uh, and dave i've done the cheese thing a few times where you're like i'm definitely gonna lose this battle and so i just spend <laughs> You know, but I don't want to give up this town, so I spend right, like right. an hour just running the enemy around, slowly wearing them down, you know, just to like hurt them too much so that when I get my real army in, I can just roll over them. <laughs> so you spend an hour of real time basically to get that like extra percentage, like extra 30% damage on that army for next time. <laughs> an hour of your time is gone. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, work thing. So I've also, I bought Assassin's Creed 2 on Steam over the Steam oh, sale nice. and Brotherhood um, to play on the Steam Deck. Because I played them back in the day, I guess not through Steam. I don't remember. Like, they might have just been discs back then. I don't know. I might have just bought discs wow. and sold them. Man. I never played Brotherhood, but I, I beat 2. Um, and so it doesn't actually have a Steam Deck compatibility thing. Like, um, it, yeah. it's not officially supported, but it works fine. And it has that's, a... That's great. It has a community controller profile. So when you start it up for the first time, it switches over to, oh, we've downloaded like a, a whatever the community set up and people voted as this is the best controller profile, which is basically an Xbox 360 setup. Um, oh, that's cool. And the game runs great. And on that screen, like it, it works great too. It, uh, you know, because it's not trying that hard to run at 60 FPS, uh, it, I can get almost three hours of battery life off of, uh, 
you know, off of that compared to like if I'm playing a modern game where it's really stressing the Steam Deck card, I might only get like an hour and 20 minutes or something. Um, hmm. You know, if you're playing like Assassin's Creed Origins, I was playing on the plane back from Colorado and I'm running that. How did it run that? High settings, 30 FPS locked. No Dang. issues. That's, well, that's actually, wild to even say. Like, actually, I was just playing on the plane. Not 30, 40. <laughs> I set the refresh rate. A new patch came out where you can change yeah. the refresh rate of the screen. So I changed it to 40 hertz. And so I was playing 40 FPS and it was super smooth. You can set the refresh amazing. rate to any setting between, I think, 30 and 60 or 20 and 60. I just heard they did that now with the PS5. Really? It supports variable refresh rate, refresh rate if your TV or something like that supports it. So they do 40... 60, I think 90 and 120, I think now. Mm -hmm. Or something like that. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, sorry. I know I'm I'm being slightly a little bit rude. Should, should, uh, we, should we continue without you? Jerry? No, 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 Is you're good, happening? you're good. Um, I've also been playing some Elden Ring. I Like I told you before, I'm really close to the end. Um, I'll talk about Ready or Not in a minute, but I've also been playing a newer game called GTFO. Uh, that's literally what it's called. I'm not censoring it, but it's a co-op like Left for dead killing floor style. You have to get through this area game But you're like huh. prisoners being dropped to the bottom of this prison and having to fight your way Through aliens and stuff as a part of these science experiments, whatever. It's a co-op shooter You know that has like turrets and power-ups and all that type of stuff. So I've been playing that with the boys That's been pretty fun and then ready or not the two new maps are out I think the game is verging into like being edgy for the sake of being edgy for a lot of this because some of the content in one of those maps, Dave, have you played it at all? Yes. Yes. Okay. I've, I've played both I, maps thoroughly on my own to explore. Yeah. Okay. So if you're familiar with the one I'm referring to, when I got there and I started realizing, I'm like, this is just perverted. Like, this is just dark for the sake of being dark, this setup. Like, I, I don't get it. But. I don't know. It, it's great. The, the game is fantastic. The art design and everything, the lighting is gorgeous on the new maps. Um, and it's just as difficult as ever. But like, so my, my comments about the edginess, it's really just, it seems like it's designed for people to like flip out while they're streaming it or something. I don't know. It it, it feels like it's the, a, <coughs> they could have pulled it back a little bit and it wouldn't have changed the tone at all. That's my opinion. But go ahead before we keep talking. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they could have pulled it back. Sure, some. But um, I don't know if I'd agree if it's edgy for the sake of edginess. I, I think it's it's mostly done in, in ways where um, it's, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to word this, like um, it's not done in, in, a, in a campy way. For the most part, it That's is true. just uncomfortable for the sake of being uncomfortable. Um, and I, I don't want to- What is this map? I, I don't uh, want to spoil it. It's it's essentially you you're busting a like child predator ring in like like the Hollywood Hills gotcha. basically, and you you basically come upon like a, a dark room in a basement with like a bunch of photos and and gotcha. there's like heavy implication that like they have like a huge media library down there and also implications that like they've been possibly like burying bodies of some of the kids like in the basement stuff like that like it's. Yeah. And some other stuff like like that, where it's it is supposed to be kind of like a, a super dark reveal because it's one of the last areas you'll find on that map. Yeah, gotcha. But gameplay good as ever. <laughs> I mean, I it, it's a ton of fun. I feel like you can also pick pretty much whatever gun combo you want, like gun and equipment thing, and the game doesn't really punish <laughs> you for it. Like you can have a good time with pretty much anything. The other day, three of us died, and it was I think just Chris or just Shane working their way through for like another 20 minutes just on their own. They went through yeah. like every bullet in their guns before they finally ran out and got picked off, but they were making pretty good progress. It's, I really like it. What else did you want to talk about with it? Yeah, I, I liked Chris's description of the, the nightclub level. As we were going for the first time, he basically described it as, this is beautiful in all the wrong ways. Like it's, it's very authentic feeling without being campy. Um, dark touches like you you know you, you turn one corner and it's like the cell phones were going off and no one's answering and for some of you know the actual real world events uh, like some of the nightclub shootings some of the first responders have said things like that are like the most haunting things that they remember like the cell phones going off and no one being there to pick them up stuff like that um, so yeah I think at least for what they've done so far 
it is walking a good line between authentic and, and without being without being too campy. Um, incredible level design, art design, and incredible AI updates for this last update where they can take cover like behind doors, under beds. In the some AI cases. has gotten a lot better. It actually feels like it, they're not just people standing there waiting for you to bust around the corner. There is the feeling of like, oh, the person's not in the room they were in last time. Like, we got to go looking. Yeah, what the happened? AI seems pretty good that it actually... The reason why it looked really interesting to me was it, it gave me vibes of Modern Warfare, the new one. Yeah. Did you play through the one where you're clearing yeah. room? Like the, that was the best level I've ever played in a first person shooter ever. Like it was just so cool because the people would pop out in various ways and then you try to not hit civilians and stuff. So it, like, it really just gave more of that weight to like mm -hmm. navigating, not just shooting up. It was just like, oh crap, this would be terrifying to go through. And so like, yeah, the the enemy enemy AIs in a lot of these games are just boring oh no, as crap. Joel, and this one, and Joel. that's why, and that's why I couldn't get into Cyberpunk. I mean, the AI was terrible. I mean, it was just so bad. Like it wasn't even fun to like shoot the bad guys for me. So I think like this one. Looked Joel like prefers a lot games of fun where someone's walking tough. past and they go. <laughs> <laughs> Stop right there! Yeah. <laughs> Stop, criminal scum! <laughs> Never should have come here. <laughs> Please, ready or not, bust in the photo lab. Never should have come here. <laughs> <laughs> the guard, the corner. Yeah, the the quick decision making, especially with the AI being as lethal as they are, it's it's tough. Um, I cracked up on our first playthrough with uh, it was I was playing with Chris and Shane. They had, I was already dead. They were busting through that that underground section in the the Hollywood Hills house, and had taken out a bunch of armored guards protecting like the 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 basement area. And then as they were about to clear a room, somebody kicked a door in and ran into the room. And Shane spun, expecting you know, like another ambush, like they'd just been ambushed like three times already in that basement. And the guy had just enough time to yell, help me, before Shane put three rounds into his chest. It was like a like a, a, a caterer or something who had gotten oh, lost. No. He had like he had navigated from like the party level up at the house down into the basement because they had like unlocked a door or something. And he just busted through the door and got blown away. I, I can tell we are all way too jumpy to do this in real life because anyone flies the door. We're like, oh, they could have they could have been a bad guy. They definitely could have been a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my last comment about AI. Um, again, huge improvements in this patch. Incredibly impressive work. The I won't say the only thing. The the huge focus that they should be having right now are on the initial AI reactions because still too often you get the John Wick reaction where like they're facing the wrong way. They're not. They haven't noticed you yet. You do like the drop your weapon and they like spin and put two rounds into your vest in like half a frame. It feels like like super fast. It just feels like the AI is is too too quick off the go still, and and that tweaking alone is going to really really affect how the game feels because right now it feels like you have to be quick on the trigger on these more lethal missions because the AI is a little too quick to spin, even if you caught them off guard. Um, but yeah, other than that, incredible incredible patch. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Um, I don't know if I would recommend GTFO. Like it's, um, I don't know. I don't know if I would recommend it if you're trying to choose between co-op things. It seems like it's cool, uh, but it also seems like it's maybe a little bit unrefined or unpolished. I'm looking forward to playing it more with everybody. But anyway, uh, this podcast has been going for a bit. We we got to get into some news, guys. There's some good news, and we we can go through this pretty quick. Joel, what time is it? 927. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's time. I'm sorry. You had one job. Cut the feed. Cut the feed. <laughs> Joel, Joel, I do mean this in a serious way. I'm a yep. little disappointed in you right now. Mm. Well, he's, it's not, he's not mad, but he is disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> It's because you said talk about news, so you kind of like ruined the news I, word. I know, so. I know. I didn't set you up like we used to. I'm yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. That's my part. I like there, that part. Partly good pivot. it's on your shoulders. Good pivot. Good pivot. Um, so Diablo Immortal. You're familiar with this, the new the new Diablo. Um, it's well, everyone's in, got phones, dummy. It's bringing in over a million dollars a day in microtransactions. <laughs> this is why they don't care how upset you are, because they're making a million dollars a day. Two kids playing this game, just shoveling <laughs> money. 
Mom's it's credit had card over 10 bird. million mobile downloads in the version's first 30 days of availability. So that doesn't include the PC version of the game. So it might be underselling the financial success because with PC players included, um, Blizzard says they hit 10 million installs after just over a week. So it probably total numbers are like 12 to 15 million people so far. I noticed Edgar's been playing it some. Uh oh. <laughs> what? Oh, of course. Anything that's grindy. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Freaking Eggert in uh, what was that game? <laughs> uh, Sim City. <laughs> that poor guy put in like a hundred hours in like a week. Like it was when it came out. The was it? it, it I'm talking about yeah, the yeah, the Sim, Sim the yeah, EA Sim City, the new one. Yeah, like I mean it was, it was a cool looking game, but holy crap! By, by the new one, Joel, you mean the one that came out like eight years ago? Oh, dude, it was 2013. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Joel. Oh, dude. I speaking of that, I saw someone post and said, "They're like what we all were like what we all think Mario looked like 20 years ago, and it was Super Mario Sunshine." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh," I'm thinking like you know 20 years ago, it's like, "Oh, Super NES Mario." Damn it. <laughs> the ones that get me are the uh, what what you think of of a 20 year old car in your head versus what's actually a 20 year old car now <laughs> it's like it's a huge difference my favorite yeah, is always true uh less time passed between the first flight and man setting foot on the moon as man setting foot on the moon to now Man. that's that's pretty mind-blowing uh plug for watch for all mankind great show on apple tv for all mankind by ronald Moore, the creator of Battlestar Galactica. It's a fantastic show for all mankind. Apple TV. Apple TV <laughs> is the new HBO. You heard it here. Okay. Sponsored by so, Apple TV. Uh, Ubisoft is ending classic Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell support. So, they are taking down the multiplayer servers for some of their old games like Anno 2070, Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Assassin's Creed 3, Driver San Francisco, Far Cry 3, Prince of Persia, Silent Hunter, Space Junkies, Splinter Cell Blacklist, a couple others. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, no one was playing multiplayer for those anymore, so is it that big of a deal? Well, it does suck a little bit because if you did enjoy playing it with friends and stuff, as far as I'm aware, there's not like, you can't host your own servers or anything for any of these, like they're just going offline. That happens, though. That, that's something that does happen at certain points in the game's life cycle. Most everyone understands that for multiplayer. But if you bought digital DLC for these games, like, they're ending their support. You're not going to be able to download your digital DLC anymore if you try to reinstall these. They're ending online support for it. Well, so, this works for Dave. Dave hasn't uninstalled a game in 15 years. Not You'll true. never have... <laughs> I reinstall Windows, so I broke all the links to those installed games. So they're kind of uninstalled. <laughs> Do you still have all the files, Dave? Of course I still have all the files. So you, can't, you, you can't use them, but you can't. Oh, Joel, when I reinstalled Windows, I did not back up all my save games. I just let it go. Dude, that hurts there's, me. There's nothing that feels better than having a fresh thing and just re-downloading fresh data. Ah. <sighs> I ain't, I'm not. I don't back up my game files to other hard drives. I mean, I don't have ten trillion games either. So you'll hate this, then, Joel, because I back up my save games on my OneDrive instead of Dropbox. <laughs> my OneDrive has like a photo look back feature, kind of like Google Photos and whatnot. <laughs> so for like like once a Let's month now, going. once a month now, it's taking my um the the Witcher three save games have like a little JPEG that it saves with each save game. So yeah. once a month, it's like, look back in your memories. It's like a bunch of like low pixelated, like wisher thumbnails for my save games. Like, look back on your memories. And well, I you still haven't that finished that game too, right? What's that? You still haven't finished, finished Witcher, right? I mean, I, I, I beat all the main quest stuff. I just haven't explored every last question mark yet. Oh, okay. So you have done every quest. I, I thought you still had a few of those left. It's just those little random treasure chests worth worthless. I, yeah, I think I've, I don't think I have any quest markers left. I don't think so. If it is, it's like something super far out somewhere. Gotcha. Um, but I don't think I have any left now. I saved uh, about five hours worth on my second playthrough. I I've stopped about five hours from the end. It synced into my GOG account, so I can re-download it. But I'm waiting for whatever that next version of the game that comes out is that'll have ray tracing and stuff, just so I can do the last few is hours any, with that. Just is there any news out. on that? 
next year uh, probably. Next, next year, yeah. They're yeah. already saying next year. Oh, do they move it again? Did they move it yep. to next year? Speaking yeah. of yeah. things that have gotten moved, Dave, I think this next news item is yours. Check so out that segue. It, yeah, that was pretty good. Except for the reference to it. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like the rumors of the Red Dead Redemption remaster were true, uh, which is terrible news because the rumors are also true that it's already been shelved again. Um, it was only in the we're planning on doing this stage. And anybody remember those absolutely awful remasters of um, GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas that <laughs> came out last port, year? Yeah, they the look, ports they of look like the bad. mobile versions or something? Like they weren't even oh, really man. remasters. So apparently because of that, that's one of the primary reasons that they've they've shelved um, Red Dead's remake. So they were like, is, we did a bad job on this, and people didn't like that, so we should not do a bad job on these others? That's 50% of the reason. The other half appears to be that they are actually working on GTA 6. Mm, finally. Um, yeah. Will it gross you guys but, out if I take my contacts out while we keep talking? Oh, yeah. No, nah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right, Dave. It. Do you have the last, uh, the last news item? Let me see. Um, we might be able to save this for next time because I don't think. Have you guys looked at any of the Skull and Bones reveal stuff? Ubisoft Skull and Bones. What is what is that? It's the pirate game that was announced before the Microsoft one. Um, sea of uh, Thieves. That's the one that Debbie was Thank super you. into. Sea of Thieves is the one yep. that Debbie was into. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Skull and Bones was supposed to be the more realistic competitor to it. Yeah. And it looks like that is not the case. Um, it has gone more Mad Max style with things like. Uh, crazy looking armor upgrades for your pirate ship. <laughs> I mean, it's and, soft. What'd you expect? <laughs> and it's a pirate game coming out again. What is this? A decade plus after Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, mm -hmm. um, which let you walk around your ship, upgrade your ship, explore islands. In this game, apparently you can't explore your ship like you you're like locked into the helm i'm sorry what? do they understand what the best part of being a pirate is you it's basically like scripted not scripted it's it's ship combat that feels like you're controlling an rts game versus like a first person or third person ship oh, wow. kind of deal it's like you like get into position and it's like you have certain things you can do then you can't just raid forts and villages and explore islands you have to like arrive at them kind of like in assassin's creed valhalla you like go to like the landing mm -hmm. marker and then you like it does, yeah like, so you can't just landing. like land anywhere yeah you can you can land at like certain locations and, and so i i just looked at a few things before the podcast i, I put a video link in the doc um but it, it looks like they really are making a game that no one wanted <laughs> Like yeah, this gosh. game's been in development for so long too. Like it's it's apparently gone through like development hell. Yeah, the graphics look pretty old. Like it's like yeah, you know, it's like one of those like it's gonna run really well in 4K because it's like an older game with new stuff, you know. And, and like the very first shot in this <laughs> gameplay, gameplay trailer is some kind of like giant fantasy looking mushroom island thing that looks like it's out of the Elder Scrolls. Like yeah, the this, very this doesn't look anything like the original yeah, what in Skull the and Bones stuff this? they talked about. This looks like the whole game has basically been restarted. Probably after the success of Sea of Thieves, I'm guessing. Yeah. Mm. And, and I, I laugh so hard as a, as a cinematic trailer too that looks like really cool. Like it's this it's this pirate who's like you know, cast out by society and he gets like he like joins a ship and he gets in this big storm and he's like gonna get washed ashore and discover his destiny and the camera pans around and you're expecting like you know like Barbados or something and it's this like fantasy island thing. Like it looks like it looks like Elder Scrolls. And you're like like wait, what is this? Like did he wake up in a different realm? <laughs> I'm enjoying these comments. They're like, what in the world is this? Speaking uh, of speaking of what in the world is this we have the return of a segment tonight that I'm very excited about. We've only done this once before. Joel, it's time to for the return of Dear God, Dave. Dear God. <laughs> for anyone who oh, doesn't thinking, remember uh, this. Is this another piss in the mouth story? <laughs> uh, no, yeah, those come just, from yeah. you. If you have another one of those stories, we're game. Uh, but these stories are for when Dave surprises us all with his frugality, uh, his... <laughs> His very particular ways that he is about things. His particular set of skills. 
<laughs> and and the best part is we don't know. We legitimately don't know what this is going to be. Dave just says he has one and we're giving him the segment. So Dave, what'd you do? And believe it or not, this is not the confession about me drinking night old <laughs> Just cans of sparkling water. The They're not sparkling, Dave. It's just water at that point. It's just dirty I mean, water. <laughs> Probably some bugs in there, too. You never know. I don't check. <laughs> so, um, had family 4th of July on Sunday, a little bit early. Um, parents made some, some homemade strawberry ice cream with garden strawberries. Grandparents came over. Everybody's having a good time. You know me. I'm eating some strawberry ice cream homemade out of the container like a slob right before bed <laughs> that night, wake up the next morning and apparently the container fell when I put it back in the freezer. No. And it propped the freezer door open all night long. I'm talking, it was like 50% all the way open all night no, long. No, Dave. So everything has like sweated and oozed. So here's the good news is that Jess got to the freezer first and cleaned most of it out. <laughs> However, this is her most fatal mistake. She left a few items that were just mine in there for me to make the call on. And <laughs> we all know what my call is going to be. So first of all, the ice cream made with about 20 gallons of heavy whipping cream. I definitely saved that and have been continuing to eat that this week. Did it refreeze okay? It seems to have refrozen okay. And it was still pretty cold. Like it was, it was liquid mostly mm -hmm. by the time that we noticed the freezer door was open the next morning. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but it's mostly refrozen, and that seems to be fine. Where I went wrong in my calculations, <laughs> where I went wrong. What's that? What's that brand of frozen Mexican deliciousness? Is it Mission, Mission Foods? I don't know. Uh, I had I had a bulk pack of chicken and rice chimichangas, frozen chimichangas up there, <laughs> and after the purge of the freezer, it was it was two chimichangas, which were nice and squishy through the package. <laughs> and that container of ice cream. And I was like, okay, there's only two left. It's a recession. I don't want to waste food. They were in the back corner. They'll probably be okay. So I ate one for lunch immediately that day. Well, that should <laughs> be okay because it just thaws out, right? Like you just thawed it out and then cooked it. So that should be fine. I thawed it out and cooked it. Uh -huh. It had only been, you know, eight hours or so. Yeah. It was probably fine. Yeah, I didn't feel great the next day. <laughs> at all <laughs> i i think i had like i had like a half gallon worth of tums and uh what's the what's the pink stuff my or something yeah yep. yeah like i think i'm coming to the realization that my stomach is still pretty ironclad but i'm not 20 years old anymore <laughs> <laughs> so i i consider my mission like 50 percent a success like I powered is it, through. Is it was that enough for you to continue on in your ways? It was enough for me to throw the second one out. So put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, how, how much is it. how much is the cost? Like, how much was a box of those burritos? How much does a single or chimichanga? How much does a single chimichanga cost? The box of like sixteen was, I think, like seven bucks. <laughs> okay, so let's call it a fifty cent chimichanga. Is that fair? <laughs> Yeah. Were you looking at the three dollars of wait, wait. tums, the three dollars of tums that you ate and been like, the math yeah, I was going to say, I was like, Dave, this. it cost Dave more because he wasted medical supplies on something you just toss away. That does add into the calculation. Also, hearing the words 50 cent chimichanga does make me immediately reconsider my choices because <laughs> just knowing that like that's, that's supposed to have like real, real chicken and rice in there. It's like 50 cents, like, mm. <laughs> That doesn't, that doesn't sound very promising. That, that's not a chicken that lived out on the stars, okay? <laughs> no, it wasn't a chicken that lived out on the stars. <laughs> no, some, some, rats, some rats work their way into the shredder sometimes, you know? <laughs> Dave got the rat chimichanga. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't order dark meat. What is this? Dave, how long did it take for you to chuck out the other one, though? Like, was it an immediate, like, okay, or were you like, okay, I'm sick for enough hours that... He moved it on the counter closer and closer to the trash can <laughs> while thinking about it. <laughs> so, the best part was, I couldn't figure out why I didn't feel good for, like, half the next day. And when I was making lunch <laughs> the next day, I opened the freezer and I went, oh, <laughs> like, that's, I, like, it clicked immediately, like, that one's going in the trash. <laughs> It took the next day, but mm. um, that's my confession of the day. That yeah. I, I'm actually proud of you a little bit though, because there is that part of you that's like it's not worth it anymore. Like this isn't 
this is my body. <laughs> this is the only body I have. Um, I do have a, <laughs> not really a funny taco body. story. I just saw a, a picture, though. Somebody posted on Reddit where they said they went to a, like, street truck food festival or a food festival of some kind, and this truck had vegan tacos. Okay. So, you know, like, you go to Grandma's house, okay, on Sunday afternoon, and mm-hmm. she doesn't really want to make vegetables to go with the pot roast or whatever. So you just get that bag of frozen peas, the cubed <laughs> carrots, like uh, the peas, the cubed carrots, and like uh, the little bits of corn. And you just whoa, dump, Joel's having a moment here. You dump all of that into the pot. You know, so like, mushy. Like the super mushy ones, right? So this vegan taco was just a tortilla, and they just scooped a scoop of that stuff into it with no seasoning. <laughs> Dude, that, that's like that's like the vegetable version of like taking like fruit cocktail and just putting it in between a corn tortilla and be like, I, that's I, a fruit. I think Fruitia. it's a human rights violation. Like, I, <laughs> I think we have Dude, laws that, that, about the, that. That vegetable, it's the vegetable medley. That's Dear right, God, the vegetable, vegetable. Med- That's the stuff you see in veg- cafeterias. Yeah, the like, hero you know, of school lunches just, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's every scene in a movie that goes plop, and you go, I'm not eating that. <laughs> vegetable medley. <laughs> it reminds me of, of... You had a chimichanga medley. <laughs> <laughs> The best meme I saw this week, it cracked me up good. It was just a photo of the the classic awful British junk breakfast of like the frozen toast sticks and then those um, the beans right out of the can, the Heinz beans from the can just on a plate and it was just labeled, imagine running a world spinning empire to control the spice trade and then never using any of the spices. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, <sighs> well, everybody. Mentally. This has been the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast. I'm really happy we got to get together and do this. Hopefully, we'll have James with us on the next one. Uh, but as always, you can write into casual shenanigans at gmail.com to be a part of the show or leave a comment on this video, and maybe we'll read it on the next podcast. Um, you can also follow at Casual Shenanigans. The only thing that will ever be tweeted from that account is when we're going live, along with a link to us going <laughs> live. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for the $2.50 we're still getting on Patreon every month. You guys are the real ones. <laughs> They're considering in there. I haven't or it. or they're dead and they're yeah they for, they forgot that is what it is yeah, yeah they forgot but uh yeah thank you everybody for being a part of the show Joel until next time what should people do don't eat vegetable medley <laughs> clean out your <laughs> freezer <stay> casual <laughs> yeah, yeah clean out your freezer stay casual. <laughs>